In this video, I want to introduce the topic of neurodevelopment. Neurodevelopment, or how the nervous system develops. Neurodevelopment. The major structures of both the central and the peripheral nervous system develop during the initial months after fertilization of the egg. But the patterns of neuronal connections, or how the neurons are wired together in the nervous system, continues to change briskly during the first years after birth in response to experience, and to a lesser extent throughout life. In the first few weeks after fertilization, the developing human, which is called an embryo at that point, embryo, is shaped like a disc with three layers. And one of the layers is called the ectoderm. Ectoderm. And if we look down at it from this direction, if it's kind of looking down at the top of the ectoderm here, the very central part of the ectoderm is going to become the nervous system. And if we kind of take a view where we kind of cut across this like this, and we're looking at this, this three-layered structure, we see that the central part of this ectoderm actually rolls up. So parts of these cells kind of roll up like this. And what they're going to turn into is actually a tube. They're going to form this tube that's attached to the rest of the ectoderm. And this tube is called the neural tube. Neural. And it's going to become most of the central nervous system. So the neural tube will become most of the central nervous system. The fluid-filled cavity inside the neural tube will actually develop into a series of fluid-filled cavities inside the central nervous system of the, of the adult. The cells of the neural tube, and let me actually put these in a little different color, these, these cells that are making up the neural tube, they're going to divide and form a whole lot more cells as they're becoming the central nervous system, the future brain and spinal cord. And these cells have a special name. They're called neural stem cells, neural stem cells, because they're going to end up generating all the cells of the adult central nervous system, or at least most of the cells of the adult central nervous system. And so if we go back a little further here, when the tube is just starting to form, those are kind of these cells that are forming this tube. But there are also some a different population of cells that are out here on the wings of this piece of tissue that's rolling up into a tube. And these are special cells that are called neural crest cells because they're on the crest of this thing. Neural crest cells. And these neural crest cells are going to move through the tissues to some different places in the body. And they're going to form most of the structures of the peripheral nervous system. So they're going to form most of these structures out here, making up the peripheral nervous system. Although there are also some axons that are going to come out of the central nervous system from these neural stem cells that are going to also add to some of the nerves these axons coming out here. So there's going to be a mix of, of cells that contribute to the adult peripheral nervous system. Now if we zoom way in here on a piece of the brain, or lots of places, particularly in the central nervous system, and we look at a neuron that's got its soma or cell body, and then its axon, and then its dendrites, and these neurons are going to be forming lots of connections with each other, these special connections that neurons make that are called synapses. So particularly in the central nervous system, many neurons are born from these neural stem cells, and they form many, many synapses or connections between each other. Now after birth, it's going to have all sorts of experiences, and this will change how information flows through networks of neurons in the nervous system. And it turns out that synapses, connections between neurons, and chains of neurons, because there may be many, many neurons in long chains wired together, it turns out that both the synapses and the neurons themselves, if they're used a lot, if they're used frequently, become more efficient at transmitting information. So that instead of information getting across just a little bit, they can develop much stronger signals of, of information flowing through these networks of neurons. And it turns out the opposite is true. If synapses or chains of neurons are not used very frequently, they become weaker at transmitting information to each other. Or they may even be removed. You may lose synapses or you may even lose neurons. And these changes have a special name. This is called neuroplasticity. Neuro 
plasticity. And all neuroplasticity means is that the, ner the nervous system, the way it's wired together, the way all the neurons are connected to each other, changes with experience during life. And the amount of this neuroplasticity is greatest when the nervous system is developing early in life, but it does continue to a lesser extent throughout life, such as when le learning new information or learning new skills. Clinicians assess the progress of neurodevelopment by observing things we call milestones. Mile stones or neurodevelopmental milestones and the neurodevelopmental milestones can be categorized many different ways. A common system is to look at areas or what we call domains called gross motor, gross motor, and this includes things like when a child first starts walking. Another domain that's often looked at is called fine motor, and that includes things like learning to pick up objects using just the thumb and the index finger. Another domain is often called cognitive or cognition. Cognitive. That includes things like when language develops. And then we can also look at social functions. Things like returning a smile or returning a wave. So a clinician will look through a number of different things that we can group into different categories of what we call milestones and then compare that to averages of many children of the same age to determine if the nervous system is developing normally in a particular child.